Hi, my name is Ash Hunt. I'm a Global Chief Information Security Officer with over a decade of experience in information security across multinational organizations, and specifically focusing on quantifying information risk. In this masterclass today, we're going to discuss how information risk management has got it so wrong. Despite risk management being a well-trod discipline with effective methods over 100 years old, cyber, information security, and technology operations has failed to adopt these methods. Instead, we've adopted for heavily consultative approaches which have peddled traffic light scoring and ordinal scales, one, two, threes, fours, and fives to measure risk. This has caused a multitude of problems. We have generic problem statements, control deficiencies, and vulnerabilities masquerading as risks. We have ballooning risk registers, which expand and never shrink. We have wasted and unjustified investment and expenditure on remediation efforts. This compliance-led approach that we have as well fails to target where loss is actually occurring. We have heavily subjective value judgments and ultimately guesswork for measuring risk. We have point-in-time assessments when risk is actually based on changing variables, constantly in flux. We also have false certainty over reflecting meaningful uncertainty. Ultimately, organizations aren't getting value out of their decision-making or any insight into their returns on investment on their risk spend efficiencies. Let's take a step back. All risk is probable loss exposure for the business. The business has strategic objectives and achieving them inevitably incurs loss. Almost all businesses operate on technology in the 21st century which is why it's not useful to designate cyber risk or information security risk. It's all technology or actually operational risk. With this understanding, organizations can start to focus on identifying the scenarios that are actually causing their businesses harm. Part of the issue with the traditional or indeed qualitative approach to measuring risk, as I've just described, is that it ignores uncertainty. It forces professionals to make fixed but ultimately vague claims about how the status of how likely or probable a risk is to occur and its associated impact. In reality, you could experience the same incident multiple times over and suffer a different loss or indeed impact each time because risk is influenced by those random variables. We need to measure and model risk in a way that reflects uncertainty and helps professionals extract value from it to inform decision-making because all risk management is decision management. As we forecast, we first need to establish a view of how often bad things are happening. Things that breach the confidentiality of data, affect the integrity of data, and indeed render data and systems unavailable. We then want to stress test our prior assumptions with additional data to help calibrate the probability of the harmful event happening in the future. Then we can land on an estimate of how probable the event is to occur based on our existing security posture. Part of forecasting is also about measuring loss. This can be, and indeed must be quantified in financial terms, since all harm to a business and subsequent investment to reduce loss exposure ultimately manifests in dollars lost. Loss can be considered in two ways. First, primary losses, which are experienced every time a type of incident occurs. Think of the direct impacts such as productivity downtime, response costs to the incident, and costs of replacing any people, processes, or technologies. And then we have secondary losses. Now these are experienced only certain times given a type of incident. Think of indirect impacts such as reputational damage, certain legal and regulatory fines, and even the loss of competitive advantage. Each of these loss categories reflect the varying types of harm that could befall an organization with every incident. Focusing on these parameters of probability and loss for measuring risk is critical to help. A, reflect our uncertainty. B, to capture the variables influencing our true risk. And C, to provide the necessary inputs to model loss exposure. And I've had real world experience of this. I was brought in to measure the risk of a public limited company listed on the London Stock Exchange. Previously, information security and information risk was reported purely with risk matrices, red, amber, green, qualitative scoring, CVSS scores, and other vague cyber criteria. When I was brought in, I adopted those concepts that I've just spoken about, focusing on ascertaining where the most probable loss exposure was for that business. 
Once I began to get an understanding of where it was most probable to lose money, I then looked at what mitigating measures, what control investments that we could potentially model to see how that loss exposure could be reduced. Once I had that understanding, I was able to take the differential between those two scenarios and knowing the cost of the control investment very quickly work out the return on investment for the board. And the key insight here is it didn't just furnish the board with one example. It gave them the mechanism to understand a plethora of investment decisions which they could choose based on their appetite. So today, this masterclass has shown us that the methodological step chain from ineffective practices is the first step in transforming technology risk practices in organizations and begin focusing and capturing the elements that truly help determine an organization's technology risk posture. <laughs>